Hi, welcome to a slightly different kind of video. This one isn't focused on Pixel 3D, it's focused on the Dreamscape environment series that we've launched on both Unreal and Unity. With the launch of the second pack, I've had a lot of people asking me like, if I can give them examples of how the packs work, how they blend in together, and how to make environments with them, and I plan to do just that. Before we begin, there's something I'd like to talk to you about. A lot of you have been asking us how we create the art for our packs and if they can learn to do that as well. Well, the answer is of course yes, but finding training that is actually good is not easy at all. So that's why when Wingfox approached me about their courses, I was keen to learn more. Wingfox is a platform focused on high quality art training for anything from movies to photography and more importantly, game art. One thing the community has always asked us is how can they learn the basics of creating stylized art in order to create their own bespoke assets, which are also compatible with the Dreamscape series. That makes a lot of sense since even though we try to make the, the series to encompass as many things as possible, each game is different and everybody will have their own specific requirements and assets that we just can't include. So. I'm happy to say that, now you can. If you follow the link in the description, you will get over 50% off this amazing stylized 3D cottage rendering course. This is aimed at complete beginners and takes you through the complete process of creating a stylized cottage environment, from basic modeling to sculpting and texturing using the industry standard tools and then bringing it all together inside Unreal Engine. The course right now is in the translation fundraising stage, meaning you can get it at a heavy discount over 50% off, but only if you get it now. If for some reason it doesn't reach its translation target, you will get a full refund, though based on how good the course looks, I don't see that happening. So if you like this course and want to see more and want to get it, before it increases its price, just click the link below. Now back to the video. We have released a new update for the Dreamscape Meadows series that basically rearranges its file structures and optimizes it so it's 100% com compatible with the Dreamscape Mountains and if you have both of them and install them both the same projects, your folder structure should look like this. If you have just one of them, either meadows or mountains, that's fine as well. All the rules still apply, you just get more like toys to play with. So the first step is to tweak a few project settings so everything works as intended. So go into your project settings, open and then allow static lighting, disable this. Basically, when making open world projects, you don't really use static lighting, especially with the uh, things like vegetation because like by its nature static lighting is static and vegetation is moving so you have a lot of weird artifacts. If you do know what you're doing and want to allow static lighting for other objects feel free to leave it on but if you don't uh, remove it and you can always turn it back on later when you need it. The next one is generate mesh distance fields. This allows us to use uh, some optimized uh, far, terrain far terrain and actor shadows. We use them for the uh, shore foam effect and just a lot of different things. So just turn it on. And the last but not least is virtual texturing. So this enables the virtual texture support, which is really important, especially for Dreamscape Mountain, since we use virtual texturing a lot for the grass, which basically just allows you to take the color from the terrain material and apply it to the grass. So the grass will always match in color with the terrain, no matter what the terrain color is, which is a really cool effect. Once you've done this, just press restart now and wait for it to restart. Great. Now I just went and made a completely new level, just a standard level. Feel free to delete the floor and let's just make a landscape, shall we? We can start with a small one. 500 by 500 is fine. Great, wait for it to create. Okay, 
if you want to remove these just go to the light source and then put it into movable same for the skylight okay Th this way it's all dynamic uh, you can save your level just save it as intro whatever doesn't matter now you have the terrain now the next step is to apply material to it right now you can go to shared resources materials and terrain and basically we have a couple of uh, different terrain the terrain master and the terrain master vt if you don't have dreamscape mountains then you will just use the terrain master if you have dreamscape mountains you will use you will have the vt as well which is the virtual texture one but instead you can always create a material instance of any of this for example and you can just go and populate it with your own settings for everything but what's easier is to just use the existing one so go to mountains in our case ter no not terrain materials terrain and mi terrain demo just uh, select the terrain and drag and drop the landscape material here and basically this has already has textures and everything included you can just re replace them if you want with your own textures or textures from the previous and future packs as well so we have like this has cliffs dirt grass and this is from the dreamscape mountain series but we have cliffs dirt, dirt grass from the meadow series and you can replace them i'll show you how a bit later so you have already have this save and as you can see it's all black which is normal because this uses layers to paint so like if you go to the landscape paint you'll see you have a ton of different layers but you actually need to create the, the layer object actor that stores the layer information and this way it's really easy to create layer info weight blended normal put it like this because it doesn't support the spaces okay and this as you see is gonna fill the entire terrain with the first layer now just do the same steps for all the rest okay and now if you can see we have all the different layers set up and now you can you can paint with the dirt and as you can see the dirt's getting painted and it removes the grass where you paint the dirt which is natural because the way this grass is set up it's gonna it's gonna place grass meshes automatically on the auto landscape where the actual grass is and on the on the grass and grass dry uh, layer so if you, can, if you paint just grass here you see it's gonna populate it with grass but the grass looks ugly because it uses virtual texturing but we haven't set up our scene for virtual texturing let's do it now okay this is actually really easy assuming you've enabled everything just go to volumes go to runtime texture volume select the landscape select your virtual texture which should be rvt landscape in this case okay uh, copy rotation copy bounds great so basically this creates a a box a bounding box that just automatically covers the whole terrain as you can see and let's go to our landscape scroll down add a virtual render to virtual textures and voila that's it as you can see it works right now which is really cool so now basically every time you're gonna paint especially using the auto terrain material you'll already have grass and flowers painted if you want to change the settings like if you want other types of grass or less grass or more grass or less flowers that's easy to do you go into your dreamscape mountains you go into your uh, let me think terrain and you have the landscape grass type it's the same concept in meadows as well if you go to the terrain you have grass one grass new grass variation and grass variation one it's the exact same concept but it doesn't use uh, virtual texturing by default unless you have them both so we'll still use these because i prefer the look of these so you can go back to the uh, terrain and just 
for gas main as you can see we have a few gas varieties gas medium gas medium zero three and we have the flowers flower groups so if i want to remove the flowers i'll just put the gas then I, you can either remove them from here directly but you might not want to do that just put the gas density to zero this remove the most of the yellow flowers put them here to zero as well okay and there's only a couple of different flowers which are used by the other uh, grass layer because this is the auto landscape and it uses grass main and the grass layer uses the grass main variation which is kind of like this but also not quite so let's control z so we have our oh, control z too much landscape come back to virtual textures okay done uh, before we move on let's get rid of the slightly annoying glare shall we go to volumes add the post process volume and here and uh, what settings and the exposure settings I mean right and one one and one uh, there you go and just set it to enabled and infinite extent there you go this is gonna remove the like eye adaptation thing which I personally find it annoying but not sure about you and we can crank up the intensity of the light so it's a bit like 15 make it slightly more brighter change the color a bit so it's more yellow like natural sunlight okay now in order to sculpt your terrain like a lot of people ch choose to import their own terrains from other programs like uh, world machine or gaia or world designer there's a ton of but you can also make your own landscapes you don't need to import uh, height an existing height map to make your own terrain. I'll show you how to make a simple terrain using mostly the terrain auto material we have and uh, tools Unreal gives us. So go select your sculpt uh, brushes here and just just start sculpting. As you can see, like this is a bit too big. Let's reduce the size of the brush. This is where our player is and just. The terrain auto material will start coming into play and will change the textures based on right now it's mostly on the slope so if the slope is high it's gonna start having uh, using dirt and if the slope is really really high then it's gonna start using cliff so you can reach some pretty cool effects just like this just you see as you can see you can make a really high cliff there you go increase it Okay, you can flatten the terrain and just make a ridge as you can see and oh as you see there's a couple of um, issues here our grass has gone black well if you remember initially when we set up the runtime virtual texture volume it has the infinite the bounds like after the terrain and when we set it up our terrain was flat so now we just have to copy the new bounds and as you can see this is going to fix the issue and again as soon as you edit your terrain just increase the bounds uh, again and it's gonna work so i think we can also manually increase it no uh, not really unfortunately so you have to be you just have to update it if you either increase the height of the terrain or decrease the height like that goes under below zero okay good so now that that's done let's just start sculpting here a bit more just create some nice rolling rolling hills and set up like a nice looking scene that we can populate with vegetation
I've doodled around the terrain uh, brushes and whatnot and, and got this. It only took a few minutes to make, so it's nothing great by any stretch of the imaginations, but it's, it's a nice enough uh, place to prototype and start adding some trees and make it a bit nicer. Now, obviously, to better assess the current area that we've made, we should walk around through it using a character. You can do this by just going to the blueprints, game mode, and just select the third person game mode, and just hit play. And you have your character here and just, I don't know, you can explore the area, see how it looks and whatnot. Okay, so one more thing that we need to do is to add foliage. And foliage, it doesn't have to be necessarily foliage, it can be just any type of actor you just want to place on mass here. You can just drag and drop it here. For example, let's say I want a few trees from the meadows, a few trees from the mountains, a few bushes and whatnot. I'm just gonna go to my meshes, foliage and start with trees. Okay, this is for my mountains. Let's go. Let's start with meadows first. Okay, what do I want from meadows? I'd like some nice trees. Uh, the tree birch free looks good to me. Uh, maybe the tree birch red for uh, I don't think I need the big ones but I'm gonna make use one of these three here and maybe uh, three by zero two okay that should be enough uh, other things that I might want from there uh, the cliffs I'm gonna place the quick cliffs manually but these are some small rocks. I'm gonna add all of them here so you can select and add them all at the same time. And what else do we need from foliage? Oh, we could use some, some mushrooms. Mushrooms are always good. And plants, I already have the flowers from the, from the mountains, so I don't need them, but I definitely could use a few bushes and whatnot. Uh, let's use this and this maybe. Okay, and from the Dreamscape Mountains, I'm gonna go to Meshes as well, and see what we can get there. Ooh, I like this, these flowers and the red ones, you can make some nice flower fields, grass, plants, ooh, some ferns, definitely some ferns. Just basically drag and drop them all in the scene, and let's use, I'm not gonna use the big, uh, the big conifers, just some of the small ones to and or actually I think these two are gonna fit well with the rest of the scene and maybe this for added variety okay as for props can also add some rocks here as well not a lot yeah these 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 maybe these as well and these okay so as you can see adding foliage types is really really easy and now if I'm gonna do this, it's gonna, well, it's gonna place everything at uh, <laughs> in the same point, and we don't really want to do that. So, first of all, paint density determines how, like the density of the object. So if I can, can increase this, see, it's a, a bit less dense, but still super dense. That's because this check mark means that the object is selected from paint for when you're gonna paint it. So. Select, select them all here, just let me increase this a bit, select them all and uncheck them all. So now there's nothing to paint with. And now you're gonna check them individually or in groups, for example, I'm gonna, I've checked the tree and now it paints these nice trees. Like if I'm gonna check these two, it's gonna paint both of them and so on and so on. Now there's a lot of different things you can do here for each instance. So if I'm gonna select this instance, I can paint, change the density, the radius, the Z offset. Basically Z offset is how deep inside the ground do you push it. For example, this is right on the ground, but if I put the Z offset to minus 10, I think, and max minus 10, it's gonna spawn it a bit further inside the ground. So it's, it's useful, especially when painting painting on hills 
since you want the tree to be a bit further down so it doesn't look like it floats. So other things you can have the align to normal which means that it aligns to the terrain which we don't really want for trees because it looks odd so like if, it, if we change them like okay much better now and you can make if it's static or movable up to you cast shadows and the collision presets as well i use them i usually put block all for trees but it depends for bushes i leave them on for um for big rocks i t uh, i leave them off for big rocks i leave them on for very small props i leave them off as well but it's really up to you so now Let's, I'm gonna go through all of the different foliage that I'm gonna use. Gonna change the settings accordingly, so the as mo mostly the terrain alignment. So I'm gonna remove the terrain alignment for all, all the trees, but keep it for the smaller props since it looks okay aligned to the earth. So these are the basics of getting started with Dreamscape series. I do plan to make more of these videos as uh, further packs are released. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you guys next time.